Hello boys and girls, Dr. Carlo Oger, emergency physician with TheEDExitVideo.com. Yes, I got the domain name, so if you put TheEDExitVideo.com, it'll send you right to my YouTube page, so you can keep up with all my updates, so that you can see, especially when there's videos with multiple parts, part one, part two, part three, you can see them in sequence. You can go back in time all the way down to uh, July of 2011 when I started my channel and see how I've gotten better with the videos and clinical and uh, everything I'm doing. So please go to theedxitv.com for a direct link to my YouTube channel. This video I'm excited about. Thousand thanks to the patient for allowing me to record this. These don't come very often. A lot of times people come with um, dental pain and swelling of the gum, uh, but never there's an actual abscess that we can drain. And uh, as an emergency physician, I love to do these things because it's actually the time I get to fix something and, and take care of it. And uh, some people come with swelling and here and there, but there's nothing to drain. So all we can do is give them pain medicine, antibiotics, and get them home to follow up with the dentist, which sad to say, there's no many dentists that will take people on emergency basis because the first reason they need a dentist is because they didn't have follow-up, adequate follow-up, so they let their uh, dental disease and decay cause dental problems, infection, abscess. So it's really hard for them to access an emergency uh, nature. And even if they could, one, they discharge a lot. Number two, they usually want the patient on antibiotics and they want the abscess gone before they treat them. So it really leaves it up to the emergency medicine doctor to provide the first step dental care. So anyway, enjoy this next video. See ya. So this patient obviously had some dental issues, a lot of dental decay and, and, and damage to his uh, dentin and stuff. That leads to bacteria sitting in and you can see right there on the middle of the screen in the gum area, a big area of swelling and that's the abscess. Very, very tender to touch. I have this on slow motion. So I didn't keep this patient that long like that, but at least you can appreciate there. And a lot of times you just see gum swelling, but you don't see a localized area of fluctuance. That's a key word when you're charting this kind of patients. Fluctuance is equivalent to abscess formation or localized pus and so on. Again, thank you so much for this patient for allowing me to share this video with you all so you can all learn from uh, his condition and the treatment and how to perform uh, an abscess drainage on the gum. Now, uh, if it was on the lower mandible, then you can do a mandibular block, which is away from where the abscess is, and that's a lot neater uh, way of, of uh, achieving some numbing. This patient actually put a resting of uh, piña colada tasting numbing medicine before I attempted this, but either way, you can see he was hesitant, he was very painful, he kind of pulled back and I had to re-inject. He's pulling away from the video screen, so I'm sorry about that. All I'm doing is going right on the gum tissue and on the, um, really the lip, the upper lip, to inject lidocaine. This is just plain lidocaine. I'm injecting it slowly. I injected it uh, on the frontal side and I'm going a little uh, more on the back side of it so that I can achieve some numbing. And I even waited some time, so I did do some video editing on this. This is not real time video. So I do the injection, approximately three or four cc's of lidocaine. And he was numb. Uh, I touched it and he said he was feeling better. However, you'll notice that when I finally go in with the um, um, blade to do the incision part of it, he, he hurt too. Uh, but at this point, I was already committed. I was already there and I just drained it quick. And uh, you can, you'll be able to see all the abscesses and stuff that came out. So he said there, said telling me that he does feel numb, but he was also feeling a lot of pressure more in his maxillary tissue and stuff. And, and right now I'm just checking again, making sure he's numb re-examine the wound so you all can appreciate the abscess and also his um, dental disease. Uh, a lot of times his dental disease is, uh, has to do with diet and, and uh, medications used in the past and not necessarily due to hygiene or, or anything like that. Um, so please don't make any judgments about people's teeth. Uh, some of these things are actually medical conditions that cause chronic gingivitis or low circulation to the gum and that leads to dental disease and decay. Some of it has to do with how good a care they had or how much access they had to dentists and cleanups and things like that, but it's not always the case. Here I'm trying to get a good view so that when I am ready to do the abscess drainage, you can all appreciate what I'm doing. I have the the light on the camera on so you can see better as well. Uh, the patient volunteered to hold the lip open for me so that 
one, I could access it better, and two, that you could get a good view of it. So you can see, obviously, it's hard to do this by your own. It would be nice to have a helper, a nurse, or a tech who can do this for you so your hands are free to do the procedure itself. But this is the emergency room. Even though there's staff, there's not a lot of people available to do this kind of things. Don't worry, you'll be able to see the stuff come out. There you go. Sorry I got on the view of the camera there, but I was trying to get and do the procedure. This is in slow motion, and you can see all the pus coming out. And there was a lot of it, a lot more than I expected, to be honest, from exam, but nothing really to act. Uh, use suction or aspiration or anything like that. And um, you can see I, I'm just wiping the pus out and stuff, but even then, we put in pressure on the abscess, it was still very painful. So he did get pain medicine in the ER. He's getting prescription for pain medicine. He's getting prescription for oral antibiotics. Usually for the mouth, we use just plain penicillin. If they're allergic, you can use clindamycin orally, um, but penicillin usually does the trick. You give 500 milligrams three times a day or one gram twice a day. And then, of course, pain medicine, don't forget. Obviously, he needs to follow up with the dentist. Chances are he's not going to get the chance because they're very expensive and they won't see people right away. But that's it. Uh, at home, he can do gargles with half peroxide, half water, and put some warm packs on it and come back for recheck if he develops fever, chills, vomiting, nausea, or anything like that. Again, thank you for sharing this time with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. That's the juice that keeps me going. So uh, make sure you do so. Bye-bye.